ladies and gentlemen, and being a producer of Wrestle Massacre, as well as Inside Movies Galore, I am David Stregi, and welcome to Delusions of Grandeur. Enjoy the reviews. I certainly did. I'm setting the example. And what I've done is going to be puzzled over and studied and followed forever. Yeah. Delusions of grandeur. You're no messiah. You're a, you're a movie of the week. You're a fucking t-shirt at best. Okay, Dave, that's it. Screw you and your college flunkies. I've had enough of this from you and from everyone else. I know what you guys are trying to do. Break me down, drive me out of the force. Well, it's going to take a hell of a lot more than a lame prank like this to get Curtis Mooney to throw in his badge, so fuck you. Over. Did you miss me? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Delusions of Grand Tour. I am your host, David Streggy, and here I have another review for you, um, this time from a film that was funded on Indiegogo, and the second film in which um, director Eric Palmer is involved with. So technically, this is his first feature film venturing out on his own and he is a producer behind whiskey drinkers uh, uh, uh well at least that's the company that uh, uh, that he's kind of with um and in association with a uh, baby love productions and sovereign cinema as well as writing the story with greg moore is his film called inheritance I have a tagline on here that says, Some gifts you cannot give back. <coughs> the film stars uh, Nikki Alois, Andy Joe Vargo as Scarlett D'Arezzo, uh, Melissa Sapienza, who starred in Arm Wrestling Roulette, Stars in here as Josie, uh, Nikki Claus, who plays Elizabeth, or otherwise known as Lizzie, in here, um, Justin Eisenberg, who plays Matthew, the husband or boyfriend of Scarlet, um, name of Matthew, and we got Joseph Warnick, who plays Josh. An intended love connection to Josie. <coughs> Matthew Finati, who plays Officer Finati. And so, uh, so on and so forth. Other characters in here that I wasn't sure uh, uh, sir, uh, sir, who played them uh, were Scarlet's Uncle Drake, um... Gabby, who is Josh's sister, and Austin, who is the uh, tag-along boyfriend uh, for the ride. So, basically, here's the gist of the story. Scarlet 
evidently is sitting at home with her boyfriend or husband or Matthew <coughs> when she receives a letter. Um, and she reads it aloud in her mind um, that her father has died and left her a cabin in the woods. Um, and the next night, uh, she has a dream that evidently she's been having. I love how this film begin, uh, begins. It begins kind of grindhouse y. And um, I found out that the song that is used in the beginning and the end titles um, is by October Noir, uh, a song called Symmetry. And I like it. Uh, it's. It's got, <coughs> it's got a nice tune to it. Um, I love that low voice. It's uh, and there's a woman running through the woods. I believe this is the dream sequence that uh, that we are seeing of uh, 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 Scarlet's that she's had since she uh, she was very young, or or whatnot. But anyways, she gets together with a a, a group of fr uh, friends, Josie. Lizzie, Josh, and I guess the cabin comes up in conversation, and the girls are uh, uh, like, "Hey, why don't we go away for the we uh, uh, we weekend?" And at first, she's like, "Well, no," uh, uh, but eventually, she kind of caves in to her girlfriends, and uh, they start to plan this trip. Now, Josie. Uh, who was played by Melissa Sapienza, is uh, actually involved in a what uh, what seems to be a very controlling relationship uh, by a, a dude named Evan, which <coughs> <coughs> I was kind of surprised that on IMDb that um, Austin and Gabby and Uncle Drake and... Um, Oh, uh, uh, what is it? Oh, um, this Evan uh, dude weren't um, credited as uh, 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 as being someone in the film, but um, she gets some resistance fr uh, from Evan be uh, because he uh, seems to be a little bit untrustworthy of her. Um, she uh, she says she's just going with the girls, and of course it's not the truth, but uh, but it's something that uh, that uh, she. Has to make sure, uh, sure it gets past him first, anyways, because they are go, uh, going out. Anyways, um, I guess she gets together with Josh. It looks like at some um, it looks like it might have be, uh, been some kind of place that might have been on the way to the cabin. So, uh, so it, it looks like one of those park and rest stops. But she's uh, she's sitting down and they talk. <laughs> and they seem to hit it off, and the, uh, but then he asks her the question: uh, "Did you, did you tell him about, about us, or uh, what, no, what not?" And uh, she, she's like, "No." And you know, uh, they get together with uh, Scarlet, and they run into a perverted officer uh, who makes some sexual comments. They run into an old man who basically warns them away from the area. Um, and then, like, suddenly says, oh, it's getting dark, I must go, kind of thing. But, uh, but, <coughs> both, <coughs> both men, <coughs> both men, give them warnings about the, uh, the cabin and the area. And it's kind of strange. So they get to the ca uh, cabin, and uh, one of the th uh, th uh, things that I... Uh, oh, um, I noticed that the, uh, there was a very good use of a shot with a drone camera uh, uh, going over the vehicles on their way up uh, uh, to the cabin. Uh I noticed that right away. Whenever uh, uh, I see a good camera shot, that's uh, that, uh, that, that's a good um, swing over shot. But um, 
I believe it's Gabby who <coughs> first walks into the house and she sees um, something on the mantle um, or at least on a shelf underneath a painting saying something like forged from the broken sword of something or other. But anyways, um, Scarlet ends up running into her uncle Dra uh, Drake and all throughout like this drive we keep seeing snippets of a uh, girl uh, like in a basement uh, and it's all in red and we see blood getting drained from her and apparently she dies and then we see what looks like um, the body of a man uh, walking up the stairs and that's when we see um, I, I guess uh, th this is Scarlet's Uncle Drake which um, I wish I knew who he was, um, but, um, in any case, ultimately he plays a part, uh, a part in the end and somewhat in the middle because, um, we find out that Scarlet's family is hiding a deep and dark secret. Uh, not only that, but everyone apparently in the area and in town near the cabin are involved in this um, weird thing that's going on here in the woods. Um, so Lizzie is, uh, I would call, uh, call her the a uh, friend that's kind of a floozy and uh, a sleep around kind of a girl, <laughs> but uh, but she is she definitely seems like she has a free spirit. Um, but uh, when they kind of get up towards the cabin, that's when they um, hook up with uh, I guess uh, Josh and his sister Gabby and her boyfriend Austin and Austin. Uh, seems to have eyes for Lizzie. And um, Gabby notices the, uh, this and turns him down uh, when it comes to, uh, to, uh, to you know, the, uh, the whole campfire sequ uh, sequence. Uh, because, of course, uh, this group of friends uh, goes out back uh, and uh, it's Lizzie who actually shows them this ancient book Um that looks like it's got like old symbols and uh, whatnot, and Josh starts acting weird after it. Starts saying uh, uh, something about dead rising or something like that. Uh, that, and that's when, uh, like, we start to see people in robes, and what looks like the uncle is in this like black robe, and he's got this like demonic lo uh, looking mask, and. Uh, then you also see this um, girl that uh, that has been brought to the woods, um, and uh, a dude is like slashing at her with this knife, and uh, it looks like she turns the tables and kills him. And then we see the dragging of a body, uh, bringing uh, uh, being brought over to a sacrificial fire, and then the, uh, the, uh, these group of robed characters are. Uh, saying something uh, what seems to be in la uh, Latin, and suddenly, like this dude in a skull, a uh, uh, skull looking like somewhat Punisher looking ma uh, a mask, uh, somewhat looking li uh, like, um, uh, you know, that dude from Laid to uh, Rest. Um, and uh, we find out that it's a demon that has been risen uh, uh, from hell to. Uh, to gather souls for uh, for the devil, and uh, that's pretty much all that I really want to say about the film uh, b before um, before I spoil too much. Uh, at least as far as that, uh, what I do want to say, uh, say is that my favorite kill is. When this demon dude um, actually throws out a like chain and 
which grabs onto Josh's throat and rips his throat basically out. You can see the bone behind the skin. <coughs> and he basically falls. Um, and then there's a dagger or a knife or something like that that has a glint of green. I think this is the only like CGI that we actually get to see besides um, when it goes into um, the uncle's back, uh, uh, unsuspecting. Um, but I do have to say, uh, say with who ultimately becomes the monster in this uh, film, or at least the evil person, I did not expect that. Um, so I have to g give you kudos th uh, there, Eric. Um, I'm not entirely sure whether um, Andy Joe Bargo was entirely into her role, but I do believe that she gave her all for a first time on a film. Uh, at least the, uh, that she could give at the time. And I did th uh, think that this ending was was great. Um, there was definitely some, th uh, th uh, 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 some things in here I did not expect. And I love that about the film. Um, it was shot in SOV style, like a shot on video film. But there were like levels of camera work um like uh you could tell the drone was a lot cleaner than, uh, than the uh, the video camera that was actually being used and yeah um i think that's pretty much uh, 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 much it um i enjoyed the story uh, i thought that the masks that were involved uh, at, at least in the um the gathering of cult members that, uh, uh, that it seemed like there were. Um, I'm glad that it went a little violent. It didn't go as extreme as I thought it would, but I thought that 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 choke ripping scene was the best grittiness of the film. Um, and, uh, I think it was kind of fitting that Lizzie, even though I don't think she entirely deserved it because, uh, cause I actually kind of liked her character. Um, I thought it, uh, cause I thought she was kind of silly, like walking in on, uh, Scarlett and Matthew, like she was going to have a threesome with them. I thought that was, uh, was a trip, but, um, I think her death was kind of fitting for that kind of uh, free spirit, you know. Uh, but uh, in any case, um, hopefully you enjoyed my description of this film. Uh, definitely check the film out. I, I, I do believe that the film is being sold on Kunikai. Check out Whiskey Drinker's Facebook page. You should be able to fi uh, find a copy of this film, at least currently, until they're so uh, so uh, sold out. I enjo enjoyed the... Um, mystery aspect of this film and I I wasn't sure or sure what to expect going into this film. It was definitely more gorier than uh, arm wrestling uh, roulette um, and uh, I liked it. Uh, I hope that he definitely g uh, goes more gorier this, uh, uh, in his next feature and uh, just like, share, and subscribe, and hope to uh, have more film reviews out. Sorry that I was coughing a little bit uh, during this uh, review, but I'm still trying to get over uh, having bronchitis. But uh, wish me luck on getting rid of that, and hopefully the next time you see me, I won't be as sick. <laughs> but... Check out my reviews, check out my video pickups, and uh, I'll see you next time here on Delusions of Grandeur.
You were good, kid, real good. But as long as I'm around, you'll always be second best, see? 